This dude, Jared Way, just crush carded the crap out of me. This is round one. <laughs> you know how much money I paid to get to San Francisco? <laughs> oh my shit blew up! What's good, YouTube? I am joined by the four time Shonen Jump champion. Introduce yourself. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Four-time champ, Philly Luna, uh, SJC winner. So this is Life of a Duelist, so we're going to kind of travel back. What got you into this game from the very <laughs> start? What kind of drug you into this entire thing that's become such a huge part of your life? It's kind of crazy. Uh, what really got me into it was my mother. I was really into Pokemon, so I was already in the card game. Uh, business. Uh, I had an unfortunate thing happen to me in Pokemon. I actually had my whole collection jacked. So I kind of like swore against card games. Uh, there was a moment in my life where my mother was working for 7-Eleven. She brought home two structure decks. She introduced those to me and my brother. I received the Dark, Magic the Dark Magician deck. My brother received the Blue Eyes deck. And we battled. I fell in love with it all over again and uh my addiction for the for the card game uh grew into a profession not even a profession more of an obsession uh and honestly i feel like that's what you have to do in life with anything and everything whatever you really put your mind to has to be your obsession because if you can obsess for it you'll live for it you'll succeed through it you know, and that 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 was one thing that Yu-Gi-Oh drove for me, um, and that's really where it all started. My mom, two structured at Seven Eleven. So where's that moment you went from being more kind of casual to like <clears throat> actually knowing that you were good at this game and leveling up to that point? Like, where's that point where I want to get good, and where's that point where you started to get good? Uh, to tell you the truth, I know exactly uh, when that moment happened. Uh, the moment of where I knew I wanted to take it to another level was when I found out that there was exclusive events. There was uh, events that I would have to travel to. Um, you know, uh, before Yu-Gi-Oh, I never really went anywhere. And then I had the opportunity to start going to these certain events you know, at my leisure, you know, uh, just to compete uh, for these prize tournaments. So for me, that was very intriguing. And then to tell the truth, I was very blessed to go to my first event, which was in San Francisco, 2005, 2006, I think it was 2005, uh, where I was actually able to win my first event. And that just fed to my my hunger, my thirst for victory. You know, I, I honestly remember thinking to myself, I could see myself winning, you know, half of the events that I attend. Just because in my locals, I was so dominant. I was untouchable, you know, and going to these bigger events after winning my very first one, it felt the same. It was just other competitors that were not as good as me. In my eyes, and still to this day, if I'm going to get on your level, I'm looking at you in the camera, you sit across me, you play me, I am going to beat you. Period. Know that. I hope I play you. I hope you know you want to play me. You will lose, though. I look forward to it. But for real... That's just, that's just me. That's just the competitive nature for myself. And for anybody who loves Yu-Gi-Oh, that should be your nature as well. We should strive to be the best. We should want to be the best. We should always want to be on top. That's the point of playing this game. If you're playing this game to be anything less, you could be a casual player, but realize that that is what you are. You cannot fuck with me. <laughs> We got Philly's <laughs> friends over here too, hanging oh. out. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> but, that, but that's when I realized it, man. When I knew there was traveling involved, I was like, all right. You know, I wanted to do that for fun, and then I won, and then it turned into something else. 
it just made me evolve. So, you started out basically your first travel event, you, you won it. And I want to kind of travel into this because it's something I'm going to do whenever I do the documentary. Teams. You were one of the part of maybe a leader of the biggest team to ever exist. Outphase. Outphase and Overdose <laughs> are unarguably the two biggest teams to ever have existed in the past. So, what led to the inception of Outphase and what role did you play there? John, I first of all want to thank you for asking about that. Uh, to me, that is actually one of my most treasured Yu-Gi-Oh moments. Um, Team Outface to me was a brotherhood uh, of people who I highly respect and love to this day uh, on all levels, even beyond Yu-Gi-Oh and friendship. You know, I truly feel blessed to have known and to continue to know and see these people grow. Um, you know, and that includes a long roster that I really don't mind going through, and I highly apologize if I forget anybody, but in my memory, the people that were a part of that team, Team Out Phase, was Jason Halloway, Chris Bowling, Ryan Spicer, Jake McNeely, Billy Bray, Chris Pateo, and even honorary members such as Kyle Hentz, Umin Farakovich, and possibly others. Daniel Lasher. <clears throat> Daniel Lasher, my nigga! Daniel, I love you, bro. I do. You still owe me a book. Saying, there's a lot of notes in that. But, um, Lasher, I can't believe I forgot about Lasher. I, I'm sorry about that. Daniel Lasher. I learned a lot from these gentlemen. You know, I, I I learned enough to make me a four-time Yu-Gi-Oh! champion. And not only become a four-time Yu-Gi-Oh! champion, I learned how to create champions. These people that I have named before you are champions and came after me. Every single one of them. From a U.S. national champion that went to Worlds to people that have topped time after time after time. These are people that were mentored not only by me, but by everybody that I just named. I owe them great respect. To me, I just took it personal. I could not lose. If I'm going to invest my time into something, I'm going to invest into it wisely. I'm going to be passionate about it. And I'm going to do everything I possibly can to dominate it. And that is what I did. And that is what I showed. And that is what I trained. And that is what I preached. Whether we were friends or foes, it did not matter in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh!, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, the point is to cut your head off. The point is to make sure your life points reach zero before mine do. Savage. <laughs> Harry and the ruthless. That is Savage. what it is. Yeah. And as I said, and as I stated, I have nothing but great respect and love for these gentlemen, but I also made sure that they knew what kind of business we were in. We all understood it, and that's why we are great at it. And that's why, to this day, I would still stand up for any one of them in the heat of battle. It doesn't matter if they play. If they don't play, you give us that right in the bite. Once you're a master at it, you never stop. You have four wins. Obviously, one of the greatest accomplishments in the game, only tied by somebody else in this house who's asleep above us right now. <laughs> Yes. But something else that you mentioned earlier, traveling, it's a great aspect of the game. What are your two favorite events outside your wins, since we're going to get to all of your wins here in a second? Specifically, two events I can't think of. For me, one of my favorite events was with you. It was an 07 Gen Con, where uh, we had five people go, and... 
everybody but Sammy Huda did when something. I lost to Kenny So. Well, yeah, yeah, I lost to Kenny also. That was awesome. That was an awesome trip. That really was. I, I, I probably would definitely put that in my top five. Um, but the only reason why I can't really mention two is because I've been to so many. Um, to tell you the truth, and what I recommend to all Yu-Gi-Oh players, especially people that are trying to be competitive and are trying to listen to words of wisdom and things of that nature, going to these high-level events are highly, highly, highly recommended because they do show you things that are outside the box. Because you could be trapped inside your local seeing only certain things that people that you don't even talk to or know about, you know, understand. Like, um, you know, just, just dealing with, 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 with high competitors that constantly think of different ideas of, of, of how to have certain advantages and whatnot, side deck ideas. Like, what most people don't understand is, especially in the side deck, that's actually more important than the main deck. You side deck two out of the three games that you play, that's huge. That is so huge. And most people don't get two out of the three is more than one out of the three. And it's like, you know, they concentrate so much on their main deck, and once people start side decking against you, they just don't understand why they lose. Well, that's why. Side decking on a high level, on an advanced level, is extremely important. You know, so that's what these events do. They teach you certain texts that you wouldn't see at your locals. You know, they teach you certain things that you wouldn't see at your locals. Like, you know, business-wise even. You know, you guys tell me a lot about business. And at these certain things, you see a lot of money move. You know, and it's a beautiful thing. The whole community. Everything that has to do with you. Uh, so it's really define two I can't you know honestly they're all the mesh but I feel and experience the same at most if not all which is unity with everybody when I go somewhere I feel completely loved I feel like I'm there with nothing but family people that respect me take care of me you know um, I feel happy you can't get happier than with your with your friends with your brothers something you me and uh billy used to do uh for like almost every event for a while we would have a song for that event like what remember uh like mike the, jones Is yeah the, like, the, the the mike jones free mix with jones, little wayne yeah uh, the sky is the limit yeah <laughs> yeah and popping bottles of uh, birdman yes. Yes, that you remember that. That's hilarious. Man. Yeah, we yeah. and uh, I remember that new new was uh, one of the nationals. Uh, Brian Spicer had that remix. Yes, man, I do remember that job. And and dude, I've had so many memorable road trips with you guys that you know that's why I love road trips because those memories can be made and and they they've been created at least for me in my past. Yeah, well, I mean, when it comes to covering the, the two event thing, yeah, I mean, for me, they do mesh together, man, and that's just because they're all beautiful, and they're all memorable in a special way, and like I said, I highly recommend it to everybody out there that is trying to pay, play the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. So one thing you've done that most other duelists don't even have one of, because less than 150 people have this title, Champion. But you have four of these, which is the reason why there's so few less than the number of YCSs that are out there. So you have defined four wins. How were these events? You said your first, you know, traveling out was a win. Let's go through that one. A big question that I always get from uh, a lot of my fans, a lot of my friends, and just a lot of people, anybody that really knows me, uh, bumps into me, is which one was my favorite? One out of four. What was my favorite win? And... Your question is about my first one. That was my favorite win. To be able to break through the barrier from scrub to champion is at first an impossible feat. 
You don't know if it's possible. Why is it possible? Why you? Why can you be a champion out of hundreds, possibly thousands of people who are vying for that number one spot? That is a very hard accomplishment. For me, it was a destination. I entered that event feeling and knowing that I would win. I was excited. And the reason I say something like that, not because I'm just being bold and cocky, but because I practice immensely and intensely for about three months prior to my first event where I traveled. And that's why if you see and read some of my past articles and whatnot, you'll see that it's all about being prepared. That's never been our fault, that's never changed. It's all about being prepared. This game changes, you have to be able to evolve. If you can't evolve with it, you'll dissolve with it. You'll erase from the game. You have to be able to change into the new entities, into the new things that come alive, into the new powerhouses that bring destruction. But you know what? That is what Yu-Gi-Oh! is. It's chaos. Absolute chaos. And for me, I practiced for three months. I was able to go to this event very confident. And you always go into an event very confident. Because if you're at the fucking event, excuse my language, <laughs> just getting excited. If you're at the event, you need to be very confident. Because you paid gas, you paid ticket, you paid entry, you paid hotel, you paid a lot of things to get you to where you're trying to vent to win something. Don't be there for nothing. You're there for one thing. You're there for the same thing. For the one thing that I want. For the one thing that everybody there wants. Victory. We are there to win. That is a battle royale. Bro. Number one. My first event. To be champion. I'm extremely grateful, but I know I deserve it. Not only did I win one, but I know I will win more. Because I would be ready, because I would want it more, and because nobody can stop me. Nobody. So number one was the best. It was exciting. It wasn't expected. I came through and I immediately gained fame. So that everything was just new. It was amazing. Uh, it was unforgettable. And thank you to everybody. I still remember the father son that came to me after that and asked me for my autograph. I don't remember your names, but if you see this, that is probably my most memorable moment. Second, and just to recap, first was San Francisco, 2005, I believe. Second was, was that Land Darkness? Detroit, I flew with you. Detroit, okay, so it was Machine. You, me, and Billy had some uh, flights, thanks to my aunt. Yo, Detroit was cool. That's when we stayed with uh, the tall dude, Brian. With uh, Van Shout Sant. Out Brian. Van Sant also. Man said, yo, my Detroit people, Michigan, much love. All of y'all, for real, number love, number love. Like, yeah, Detroit was absolutely amazing. Uh, Detroit won me my crush card. When I won a crush card, it was over for y'all. Like... Y'all thought it was over when I was talking about the first one? Like, when I got the crush card, like, y'all had no chance. Like, seriously. Yo, Chris Bowley, move. Like, yo, thanks to you, dog. Thanks to you, Chris Bowling. You, I am legendary. Standing before ya, thanks to you, Chris Bolin, I am legendary.
period. Because with that crush card, after I won my crush card, Chris Bowling let me borrow his crush card to come up there in Detroit to smash on all y'all fools <laughs> and get my own crush card to become legendary. That card was, a, was, it was incredible. You know, he, he, he let me borrow that card because he had just won nationals. Um, I went through the ranks running a, a machine version with spies because at that point, a uh, true dude was popular, but it couldn't get over spy. So even if they went for the OTK combo, you know, it's very difficult to really finish you off if you can't get over a 2000 beat with 1900 guys. So I was able to really pull it off. And the real reason at the end of it all was in the semifinals, I played, I forgot the dude's name. He was really cool. And I'm sorry I don't remember your name, man. You really were cool. And you'll probably hit me up because you're probably a friend on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Um, you were really cool. You 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 just made a huge mistake. I don't know if it was because you were intimidated. Probably were. Um, <clears throat> and that's okay. I intimidated a lot of people. Um, or you just had a brain fart, you know. But uh, you made an error that cost you the game. That cost you the match. Uh, in the semifinals, and then you know the rest of the tournament for me was cake. You know, I played, I played a lot of good people, but that's in every time. I had a great time in Detroit. That was actually one of my most memorable events outside of the actual event. Um, I had a great time with certain people. Uh, it took care of me. Joseph Ritchie, shout out, people. Brian, got gotcha, you, homie. Several others, Vincent, definitely. But that, that's basically what Detroit was for me. It was credit card, winning that. That was awesome. Beating, you know, good people such as Matt Petal, the guy that messed up. He was really good. At the time, he was in his prime, actually. I don't remember his name, unfortunately. Uh, Jonathan Labonte, actually. I think he was in, he was in the finals uh, when I played him. Some really top competitors. Uh, but that was my second event. Again, my first one definitely trumps it just because it was out of nowhere. The second one, when I had the crush card, I already felt unbeatable. And I just proved it. Once I got my own crush card, I didn't have to depend on relying on my friend to let me borrow it. And that's why I'm telling y'all fools. Yeah, I had no chance. That's why I won two more. Actually, maybe one more with the crush. Yeah, it was one more with the crush. It ended how it began. Jerry Wang and Jerry Wang. Hey, and that's numero tres. Number three was actually quite memorable. It was going back to where I had won my first championship. Uh, San Francisco, San Mateo. Uh, actually the same exact convention center. I remembered everything about it. I remember being able to walk around, seeing the water, seeing seals playing around. It was crazy, it was deja vu. So it was the feeling inside me. I knew I was destined to win that day. I felt like I had, I had the best day. I felt like I was the most prepared. I felt like I was ready. I was ready for whatever would be thrown at me. In the first round, I get paired to a legendary duelist, a legendary player, and somebody I greatly respect. Jerry Wang, Tiger Claw, Dragon Bread. Call him whatever you want. When I saw that I had to play this guy, there was no other emotion or feeling that went through me other than disappointment. Just because I felt that players of our skill shouldn't have to play until later in the rounds. But I didn't know what fate had decided for me. So me and Jerry took our seats. Of course we were at the feature. You can try to look us up on Google, Metagame. It should be around there. Jerry destroyed me. I started that day 0-1 with the loss. Me and Jerry crushed carded the shit out of each other. It was beautiful. It was fireworks on July 4th. So I get crushed carded like four or five times. 
I just cry a little bit. <laughs> this dude, Jerry Wayne, just crushed kind of the crap out of me. How you think I felt? How you think I felt? This is round one. <laughs> you know how much money I paid to get to San Francisco? <laughs> To get crush carded? <laughs> <laughs> oh my she blew up! <laughs> I had light darkness in my neck! <laughs> it works from the head! <laughs> <laughs> I was upset! Yo! I was so mad. I can still recall how I felt. The thoughts that I had, like everything that was coursing through my veins, like I felt like I had made the wrong decision. Cause to tell the truth, prior to playing into that event, the rumors are true. I played 45 cards, 45. There was five cards I could not leave out that deck because there was one card that I had to worry about. That card was Light and Darkness Dragon. I main decked the Sir Priest. I main decked Tree One Frog. I, ran, I main decked DD Crow. I main decked Transmigration Prophecy. I probably ran multiples of one of those. Getting your tree born when you were trying to summon a Lion Darkness was extremely important. Getting rid of a Lion Darkness when it was on the field was extremely important. And I knew that. The deck had to run many staples. Many. I couldn't cut one out. I wanted to make the deck faster. I wanted to make the deck better. I wanted to make it more efficient. That is the goal. Make everything you work with more efficient. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Don't waste anything. I couldn't change it. If I had lost with 40 cards that I thought would make it faster, then what did it matter if I played five more cards that I think would make it better? What it came down to in California, was tech choices. All the good players, all the professional players were trying to play a version of Land Darkness Dragon. Just because I lost to Jerry Wayne, that don't mean that. Guess what? Came back into the tournament, faced the same man. I faced the same man that beat me the first round and destroyed <laughs> Destroyed him. <laughs> Jay Way! Where Anytime! You at? Anytime, bro! We can do it all over again. I love you. But I still beat you. Yeah. Win number three, baby. It was amazing. But at the same time, no disrespect to nobody. Jerry Wayne, you're an amazing competitor and I highly respect you. I love you. I appreciate everybody who has supported me. Thank you guys. One number three is for all of y'all. So we've gone through three championships here and we're going on to number four. And this one was with Black Wings. We've gone about two years forward. Uh, crush card no longer the deciding factor anymore. We've gone forward all the way, and I believe you've played a very famous duelist in your top four named Dale Bolito. We're going to my fourth victory. I did play Dale Bolito, and that's probably the biggest victory that people will remember. Um, but I, what I most remember is Mr. Foley. But you were good, man. You were really good. You had a good run. But you ain't gonna be me.
You weren't so mean, bro. Look at that savage, ruthless. <laughs> you had no chance. None. Actually, there was three people in that event who could be me. Three. And I beat them all. First one, McNabb, you're an OG, bro. I got y'all anything, everything. Period. Holla at me. McNabb, you were undefeated that event. Undefeated. I snuck in at 16. Last possible place. I snuck in at 16. And I had to play a really good friend of mine in McNabb who had an amazing deck who actually went off. Everything was great, but Dark Strike Fighter was too real. It was over. Instantly. I felt like I was firing cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Just popping at the bat, baby. Explosions. I love you though, McNabb. Really good game. Game after that, I actually think I had to play Mr. Adam Corn. That's crazy. You gotta play an undefeated guy, and then you gotta fucking play Adam Corn? Are you serious? Adam Corn? Talking about a four championship win. In Detroit, you know what I had to get, get through to get there? I had a friend betray me. I went there with my girlfriend who drove 10 hours to make sure that I was well rested enough to play in the event the next day. What's her name? Her name is Sharon Grimes. Who I bet she was pretty. She was gorgeous. Sharon Grimes, you are special. You will always be special. Know that. And know that I am a champion. I went in there because I felt betrayed from friends who told me they would take me there. I felt enlightened. To this day, I still get people that ask me about Blackwing. Philly, what you doing with Blackwing nowadays? Philly, <laughs> what's going on with that? Philly, what's going on with this? There's nothing going on with Blackwing. To tell you the truth. He didn't quit it. To tell you the truth, I'm about winning. It's not a bad thing, Derek. It's not about a series. It's not about a season, it's not about a year, it's about winning. We all move forward, never backward. When I won my fourth event, to tell you the truth, it was actually one of the most exhilarating. Even after my third, from losing my first round and winning at the end of the event, which was amazing, because honestly, that's like, that's honestly a dream come true. You see it like a fight movie, you know, you see yourself losing at the beginning because you're weak, and then at the end, you end up winning because you're strong. Like, it really doesn't get better than that. I go into every event thinking that I'm winning it. The fourth championship for me was actually the second best. It brought to my adversaries and my enemies that I was the best. Whether they wanted to admit it or not, it didn't matter anymore. I have the most wins. That's undeniable.
period. Most people thought that I should have created more out of it. To tell you the truth, for me it was all about the W. I always just wanted the win. It was exhilarating. It was never about anything else. I love the game. I continue to love the game. I fought it for many years. Even after the fourth championship win. Honestly, after I won that, I retired. Completely retired from the game. I had nothing else left to prove. That's why I disappeared. That's why I left. I was the best in the world. I was on top of my throne. Who dare challenge me? So, after my fourth championship, I disappeared. There was no reason for my return. Many people asked me when I would, including some of my closest friends, including Billy Bright, who is your new four-time champion, who has tied me, who is my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh player. And that shit is crazy, but that's my dude. I love that guy. In the Yu-Gi-Oh universe, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen, but at the same time, you know you're gonna enjoy it. People are there to achieve their dreams. What's not to love? I live for the realest. I'm here for the realest. And I wanted to let you know, you've been here with the realest. How's the champions? HOC, Philly Luna, talking about all four championships and more. I'm coming for five. I'm not going to stop at five. I'm going to double my shit. I'm going for eight. Count on it. 2017, my year. I'm going to every event. Billy Break, get your brakes ready, bro. You gonna need them, cause I'ma just make it scream all over the place. Everybody gonna find out. Live documentary, Philly Luna, House of Champions, 2016. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Come evil on, Kermit, can we zoom in on Evil Kermit? Can we try yeah. to yeah. yeah, yeah, get Evil Kermit real quick? <laughs> He <laughs> <laughs> can go like an old. I got his so well. <laughs> Yo, Pussy John.